Nobel Prize was discovered, it was, was awarded to myself and, and Joe Taylor in Princeton for the discovery of a binary pulsar. And a pulsar is a is a neutron star which results when after a supernova explosion destroys most of, of a large mass star at the end of its life. Most of you probably know what a supernova is, you've heard about a supernova, a massive explosion of a giant star. Well that explosion produces a core of very dense matter called a neutron star. It's called a neutron star because it consists essentially entirely of, of pure nuclear matter, pure neutrons. And in that neutron star, there's a very strong, <coughs> excuse me, very strong magnetic field. And that magnetic field is attached to the star, such so that as the star spins, the magnetic field tends to <coughs> accelerate charged particles, and the charged particles produce radio waves. And the radio waves come out in a beam aligned with the magnetic field. So the pulsar produces its pulses by something that's very aptly called the lighthouse effect, because it's like a lighthouse off the off the coast, which has a continuous beam of light, but the beam of light is rotating so that whenever the, you don't see it unless it's pointed right at you. So what you see from, from the lighthouse is a series of light pulses, and what you see from a pulsar is a series of radio pulses. Now, I was lucky enough, I, I was doing my PhD research on discovering more pulsars, and one of the pulsars that I discovered was the first to be in a binary system, which means that that pulsar was, instead of being alone out there in the galaxy, it was orbiting around another star. And the fact that it was orbiting around another star, plus the fact that one can measure the orbit very, very precisely by timing when the pulses arrive from the pulsar, provided a, a wonderful way to test Einstein's special and general theories of relativity. Most of you have probably heard of Einstein, right? Yeah. Okay, well, all around smart. Guy. So that's what the Nobel Prize was for, that's what a binary pulsar is, and that's why the prize was awarded for visual arts to test Einstein's theories. Okay, so what's the back of the discovery? Like, what did it bring in our science? Well, what it brought to science was, as I described, was it enabled us to test Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, <clears throat> there are various predictions in Einstein's special and general theory of relativity. Most of the special theory of relativity, which means the fact things like things move faster, uh, time changes, uh, is one of the properties of special relativity. That's an effect which has been was well measured before, but is extraordinarily large in this system and easy to measure. So you can confirm a lot of things that were already known. But the most significant contribution was the first opportunity to demonstrate the existence of gravitational waves. Now, gravity, gravitational waves are, are <coughs> let me just back up, gravitation, if radio, as you, many of you probably know, radio and optical waves are created when charged particles move around. Well, if you take massive particles and move them around, you create gravitational waves. And what these waves are are ripples in the actual structure of space and time. It's literally true. It's space and time is altered in a wave-like fashion by the movement of these massive particles. So these gravity waves were one of the key predictions of Einstein's general theory of relativity in the early 1900s. And it was a prediction which we were able to demonst demonstrate was true using this binary pulsar. So if you wonder where to single out one contribution which is the most important to science and, and the one that probably led to the Nobel Prize that was showing the gravitational waves in the real. Yeah. If it makes waves in the time and space, could you jump from wave to wave, like the top to the top, and you wouldn't have to go to the bottom? Jump oh, you're talking about things like wormholes and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, th th that's not directly connected to gravitational waves. That's a different, different aspect. Of th those sorts of concepts also come out of Einstein's general theory of relativity. Uh, but they're not really <coughs> related to waves. The waves are, are <coughs> propagate. As, as we're sitting here right now, there are undoubtedly gravitational waves from the universe passing through us. And what they have a curious property is, as you may know, radio uh, and optical emission, radio, electromagnetic waves, have, have an oscillation of the, of the electric field in a plane like that. 
Okay, so it goes, it goes, goes along, goes up and down. <coughs> Gravitational waves are a bit different. They're what's called a tensor wave, which means that as you're sitting here, you're getting alternately taller and thinner and shorter and fatter, taller and thinner, shorter and fatter as the gravity waves go through you and stretch space this way and then stretch space that way and then stretch it this way and then stretch space that way. How did I come across the binary pulsar? Well, it was a matter of, of, of a lot of hard work, certainly, certainly a fair amount of mathematics, a lot of computer programming, a lot of different things. But the point was is that for my PhD thesis, the, the research work I did to get my doctorate in physics, I set out to do a search to find new pulsars. So what I used was a big radio telescope, a telescope that picks up radio waves, and a, and a mini computer, which I programmed to try to look for the pulsations of, of, of pulsar, characteristic pulsations <coughs> that pulsars produce as the telescope scanned the sky. So I was looking to find new pulsars, and that worked out very well. I actually found 40 new pulsars. So that part was all very much by design and by planning. The, place where, where luck and serendipity came in was the fact that one of the pulsars they discovered happened to be the first one in, that was a binary pulsar, a pulsar in orbit around another star. <coughs> if, if you're interested in finding out more about the discovery story, by the way, you can look on the Nobel website, and on there you'll find not only the citation for the award, which was in physics in 1993, but you also find it, you also find the Nobel lecture that I gave, and Joe Taylor, who I shared the prize with, gave. And my Nobel lecture is actually a narrative story of how the discovery happened. So, if you, and, and I think you'll find it pretty readable. So if you're interested, go look on the Nobel website, and uh, they, they'll, you can find, and find my uh, entry, and you'll see the story of the binary pulsar discovery. Yeah. I discovered it in 1974, a long time ago. Well, the, uh, you can make a neutron by joining an electron and a proton.